Don't appeal your parking ticket until you finish this video. People make these mistakes all the time and it costs them hundreds, even thousands in court fees and increased parking fines. I know how stressful it can be going to court to appeal a parking ticket, but trust me, once you're armed with this information, you'll have all the tools you need to successfully appeal a parking ticket and, more importantly, know when to call it quits and pay early. So here are the seven mistakes that can cause you to lose your court case and how to avoid them. Number one, ignoring the issue. The first mistake that you can make is just completely ignoring it. Trust me, it's not gonna go away if you ignore it. In fact, it can result in an automatic loss in court. Take this story of David Humphreys, a supermarket manager from Howick, who used the pay and display area behind the Iceland store in Gala Shields where he works. However, he never paid a string of tickets on his car or answered council letters asking him to reveal who was driving at the time. He admitted 21 charges at Selkirk JP Court and was fined 60 pounds each, a total of 1,260 quid. So, if you think you can hide the letters or move and hope that they can't find you, you're wrong. Ignoring parking tickets can have serious consequences. Not only can it result in hefty fines, but it can also lead to legal action and a criminal record. In Humphrey's case, his reported parking violations not only cost him financially, but also prevented other people from using the parking space. If you receive a parking ticket, the best thing to do is to pay it promptly. Ignoring it will only lead to additional fees and legal problems. If you believe if the ticket's unjustified, you can appeal it. It's important to respond to council letters and provide any necessary information, such as the identity of the driver, to avoid legal action. The second mistake is making up a response. When you're in court or questioned by the police, you might feel pressure to come up with an answer quickly, but don't make the mistake of making up a response. It's likely not going to be true and it could lead to contempt of court. Trust me, you don't want to get on the wrong side of the judge. A man in Weymouth was pulled over by the police for driving whilst on his mobile phone on his way to court for a speeding matter. He made up a response saying that he was lost and trying to get to the court. Just hours later, after being banned from driving for speeding, the man drove away from Weymouth Magistrates Court and had his car seized. Making up a response in court is not only dishonest, but it can have serious consequences. In this case, the man had his car seized and faced additional legal action. Lying in court can result in charges of perjury, which can carry a prison sentence. If you're ever in a situation where you need to go to court, it's important to be honest and truthful. Making up a response can lead to additional legal problems and hurt your case. If you're unsure how to respond, it's okay to ask for clarification or seek legal advice. Number three is admitting fault when it's not yours. I know it can be tempting to take the blame to avoid confrontation, but it's just not worth it. In court, you should never admit fault if it isn't yours. Just stick to the facts and don't let anybody twist your words. The fourth mistake is simply denying the claim without providing any reasons as to why. This can make you appear uncooperative and it's not gonna help your case. When denying a claim, make sure that you provide reasons to support your case. The more open and frank you are, the better the outcome will be for you. The fifth mistake is getting angry or making threats. I know court cases can be emotional, but don't let your emotions get the better of you. Getting angry or making threats can come back as evidence against you. So stay calm and collected and let the facts speak for themselves. Being caught up in the criminal justice process can be a stressful and emotional experience. It's natural to feel angry and frustrated, but when those emotions spill over into the public domain, it can lead to serious consequences. If you lose your temper, or are unruly or disruptive in the courtroom, the judge can hold you in contempt of court. That means that they may fine you for your disruptions or if they deem that your actions were meant to obstruct justice and derail the courtroom proceedings, they may even put you in jail. Remember, maintaining a dignified silence may be difficult, but it's usually the best course of action in the long run. The sixth mistake is lack of consistency. Your story should remain consistent throughout the case. Inconsistencies can make you appear unreliable and hurt your credibility. So, 
be consistent and stick to the facts. The last mistake is not knowing your rights and not appealing when possible. It's important to know your rights and understand the legal process. If you feel that the decision is unfair, then you have the right to appeal. Don't be afraid to exercise your rights and fight for what you believe in. If you're unhappy with the outcome of your case, you may have the option to appeal the decision. However, this is based purely on the decision reached in the case. If you want to appeal the decision made by the judge in your case, you may be able to appeal against a decision to a judge in a higher court or in the case of tribunals to the upper tribunal or employment appeal tribunal. There must be proper grounds for making an appeal and there are strict time limits within which to do so. It's not possible for court staff or other government officials to review a judgment made by the courts. The judiciary is entirely independent and must be free to decide the outcome of cases without fear of interference from the government or its administration. For magistrates' decisions, there are several ways in which you may challenge them, but the most appropriate method will depend upon the type of case and its particular circumstances. Before you lodge an appeal, you are strongly urged to seek legal advice as to the procedure, merit and the cost. Appeals against the decision of the Magistrates' Court in criminal cases are heard by the Crown Court. The appeal is made to the Magistrates' Court and the papers are sent by the Magistrates' Court staff to the Crown Court. For Crown and County Courts, you can appeal both civil and criminal cases, but it will be necessary to seek permission or leave from a judge before an appeal can be made against a conviction in a criminal case. Applications to appeal and for leave to appeal against decisions made by Crown Court are dealt with by the Court of Appeal Criminal Division. Appeals against the outcome of a hearing in County Court or High Court are mostly dealt with by the Court of Appeal Civil Division. Although HMCTS court staff will be happy to offer procedural guidance, they're not permitted or trained to give you legal advice or to discuss whether you can or should appeal. For legal assistance, you could ask a solicitor or you might want to prefer to contact the Citizens Advice Bureau or another advice agency. The advice there is normally provided free of charge, so it'll save you a bit of money. Remember, before you decide to appeal, it's crucial to seek legal advice to understand the procedure, merit and cost of your case. Well, there you have it, the seven mistakes that can destroy your court case when it comes to speeding, parking fines, and also claims. Remember, dealing with legal issues can be stressful, but don't let it overwhelm you. Stay calm, stick to the facts, and know your rights. I hope this video has been helpful, and if you have any other tips or stories to share, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.